Hey guys, it's Steve for Collector Mania here doing a deck tech for the new set of uh, Amonkhet. Um, we're, today we're going to take a look at Temet. Um, he's uh, We've got him down as a token build, so it's going to be pretty cool. Um, we'll run through a few cards here and uh, kind of show you what, what we're doing. Um, so of course our commander, Temet. Um, he's a 2 cost legendary creature, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, when he dies, you have the option of putting him in your graveyard and then you can actually embalm him from there. So for 5 mana you can bring him back as a token of himself. Um, at that point, when you go to your attack phase, you can actually give him plus one, plus one, and unblockable, which is pretty cool. Um, not, I don't think there's any other commander that can actually do that. You know, kind of gets around the uh, commander costs. You know, the extra tax when it goes to the command zone, having to pay the two colors extra. But anyway, here let's get into the deck really quick. Um, our first, we're going to go through creatures first. Um, we've got a soul warden with the amount of creatures that we're going to be producing. You know, smaller creatures, we want to gain a whole bunch of life, of course. Um, Soul Warden is a great way to do that. And then uh, on to the next one, we've got a, a new card, Anointer Priest. Kind of the same deal, um, except for it's only going to trigger on your tokens. Um, it also has the ability Embalm on it for four. So if it does go to your graveyard, you can utilize it from there. And then on from that, we've got a Selfless Spirit. Of course, token decks, you know, it's really important to give your team some kind of resilience. So indestructible, since we can't blink anything, you know, like you could with a normal creature deck. We need indestructible, obviously. Um, after that, we've got a Avon Mind Sensor, just a great card in EDH, um, able to kind of shut down a lot of those really big rampy decks or decks that are trying to tutor a lot. You know, mainly going up against like black decks, stuff like that. Um, then we've got a Blade Splicer, of course, just a good token producer. Something come out early, make a little golden token. Then we've got Bree Maz, a uh, king of, how do you say that? Arescos? There we go. <laughs> I always struggle on that one, but he's a really good token generator. Um, of course, he generates when he attacks and then when he defends as well, so a good way to get a bunch of little guys out there. After that, we've got a Burnished Heart, some mana production. You know, find some lands from your deck. Chasm Sculpers after that. Uh, good way to make a bunch of little guys. Uh, I kind of built this as more of a spells deck, so you're going to see kind of, I think we have like 22, maybe 23 creatures in the deck, so not a whole lot. Uh, more based around like triggers off spells, and a lot of those uh, token effects are actually instants and sorceries, which we'll see in a little bit here. So that kind of runs in with that. And then we've got a Twilight Drover, another good way to kind of use your tokens leaving the battlefield. It puts plus one, plus one counters on them, that way you can make more and more tokens later. Then we've got Avon Wing Guide, another new card. Great finisher in my opinion. Um, goes to the graveyard, you can always bring him back out. That's the kind of the way I would play it, kind of sneakily. You know, he dies early and then when you want to just swing over and kill everybody, you just bring him back and then you've got all your tokens have evasion now. So and Then we've got Amiria Angel, another great way to produce a bunch of tokens. You're going to be playing lands anyway. Fairy Artisans. This card came out of the Commander product, I think, this last year. It is an amazing card. I, I can't get over how good this card is, really. It, anytime any creature gets played, you are making a token of it. And, for example, if you have that new uh, enchantment that doubles your tokens, you're getting a permanent token at that point. It, just amazing synergy. This card, I can't recommend it more highly, really. And then we've got a Reform great way to <laughs> kind of like pull up the chain just make a whole bunch of wacky tokens i think it ends yeah it ends in a 9-9 kraken so that's pretty good especially with uh Temet's ability being able to make it a 10-10 unblockable that's that's pretty pretty legitimate i'd say solemn simulacrum a little bit of land ramp then we've got uh tolerant sky summoner once again going with the more spell deck theme here two two drakes they're great um, then we've got Vizier of Many Faces, another new card. Um, I really like it because it's a clone from the graveyard. You basically get a dual use out of it. I I know that being able to copy some of your inner your your in game creatures with this would be great. Um, like I don't know, pretty much anything. Like even making a Solemn from the graveyard, that's awesome. A little bit of uh, extra value there. Um, Angel Invention, um, good way to give all your creatures a little bit of a buff. Life Link. Always good. Plus, it makes tokens. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got Angel Angel of Sanctions. Um, it's kind of a mini Angel of Serenity. 
Uh, not quite as good because it can't st grab stuff from your graveyard and put it back into your hand, but still pretty good removal for, you know, annoying threats, stuff like that. And, and also, you know, embalm, turn itself into a token. Guy Siren Monk really can get quite big in this deck, plus it makes tokens as it comes in, so necessary. Another new card, Glyph Keeper. Um, just a 5-3 five five three flyer, not bad. Um, also has the Embalm ability and kind of has the uh, Frost Titan thing where you can't target it unless you pay 2 extra, which is pretty cool. We've got Wing Ma Ring Wingmate Rock. Sorry, can't talk. <laughs> um, good for gaining you some life and then also really just good for making you a 3-4 flyer. We've got Linvala the Preserver. Um, when you're down in the game, this really helps, uh, gaining you a little bit of life, giving you a token, of course. Um, that's mainly the situations I would definitely use this in, but overall, just a good card. And we've got Mirror Sig Sigil Sergeant. Um, this card can get quite broken. Um, you could pretty much have an entire board of 4 fours. You know, give it a couple of turns, and you've got an army. Okay. So we're going to move on to our artifacts here. We've got Skull Clamp, of course, for a bunch of those little guys. You know, just being able to sack them and draw two cards is great. Then we've got Soul Ring, of course. Azoria Signet for a little bit of ramp. Blade of Selves. Uh, this card is amazing in here, of course. You know, once again with that enchantment that uh, doubles up on your tokens, the other side of those tokens you get to keep. So, I mean, really, just make an army. <laughs> And we've got Talisman of Progress, some more ramp. Mimic Vat, great way to copy other people's creatures and then turn them into tokens. Uh, Bone Horde, I cannot overstate the synergy between this guy and like germ tokens because they come in, they automatically are unblockable. So whatever equipment they're equipped to, it's great. Uh, Bone Horde being a really really good, you know, it can get really really big. The next one I think we have on here is Batter Skull, so another really good example of that. The life length of vigilance just automatically being a giant creature that's unblockable. That's awesome. Um, getting into our spells here, our sorceries, we've got Entreat the Angels, um, of course, big token maker. Ride of Replication, just a good way to win the game, honestly, pretty much. Makes tokens. And then we've got Sram's Expertise. Uh, Tempter of Reflections. I've never actually played with this card. It looks like a lot of fun, though. Tempting Offer. I I know that that one uh, mana ramp card has uh, been used a lot, you know, over the years, and I, I'm interested to see if uh, this one will work out really well too. <laughs> um, increasing devotion, an old standard favorite of mine. Uh, Righteous confluence, uh, pretty cool card. I, I like the confluence cycle. Um, this is one of the one, probably the least played out of all of them, in my opinion. Maybe besides the red one, but I don't know. I, should be pretty good. I mean, it's got a little bit of removal on it, you know, destroying enchantments. It can gain you some life. can also make you just three 2-2 two, two tokens, so not bad. Uh, Phyrexian Rebirth. Of course, you know, you're going through the game, you do a huge board wipe, uh, you make a giant token, and then you just embalm to met, and now you've got a giant unblockable Phyrexian token, essentially, so can't go wrong there. Horror token, sorry. Um, Sahili's Artistry. We've already talked about this card today, actually. <laughs> but great at making copies of tokens. Uh, what more can I say about that one? And then we've got Hour of Reckoning, kind of our secret uh, board wipe tech that doesn't destroy tokens. So that's pretty cool. Um, Clone Legion. Um, just another great way to make a giant army, really. And then we're on to our instance. A little bit of removal. We've got a source of plowshares. Um, then we got a failure to comply, another new spell. I'm interested to try this guy out. It should be pretty cool. And then we've got negate, just a nice cheap counter spell, of course. Reality shift. I love this card. Um, I run it in place of Path to Exile a lot because um, the huge downside in EDH with Path to Exile is usually the games are going for a while, so. Usually you remove something and you're just helping somebody out. You're ramping them because, you know, you're playing with huge decks. So most likely you're, they're going to have another threat that's worthy of that path, path to exile anyway. So I just run Reality Shift at this point. Um, the morph token generally doesn't matter. Usually it's like an instant or sorcery and it can never not become a 2-2 you know, token. So 
that's how I feel about that one. Uh, then we've got Cackling Counterpart. Great uh, token generator. You can copy pretty much any of your creatures with this. Um, and then it has flashbacks. So, I mean, another one of those things that can kind of sneak from your graveyard and then matter late game. Um, Faded Infatuation. Um, another copy token, essentially. This one's not as versatile as the Cackling Counterpart, but doubling up on it's not bad. Plus, it has the upside of if you cast it on your turn, you get to scry two, which isn't bad. Render Silent, good counterspell. Rootborn Defenses, as we talked about earlier with self and Spirit, it's good to have your team be resilient to board wipes, especially in tokens, because usually once you get blown out in tokens, you're done. I mean, that's pretty much it. Sphinx's Revelation, card draw, life gain. White Sun Zenith, a way to generate a ton of tokens. Commit to Memory, another new card. Pretty cool. Um, a lot of people don't pay attention to the whole part where you can actually tuck one of their permanents into their library, which is really cool. And if you have the mana, if it's a really scary permanent, you can always cast the memory side after that and then just get you know shuffle it back into the library, essentially. Insidious Well, great way to copy spells, especially with the amount of token generating spells that we have. Copy them, you know, also in a pinch you can counter spells and do a whole bunch of other stuff, so... Then we've got Return of Dust. We already talked about this again today. You'll see a lot of these cards are, you know, coming up twice because I, I pretty much have an Azorius like playlist essentially. You know, where this is a great white card, this is a great blue card, so it just makes sense. You know, just good removals, good removal. Uh, Mirror Match. I have had some experience with this card. It's great. <laughs> it can really blow somebody out if you're being sneaky with it. So I, once again, highly recommend this card. Uh, supplant form. My buddy Seth actually showed me this one. He uh, kicked my butt with it <laughs> several times. He, uh, I can't remember exactly what happened, but uh, I know a Snapcaster was involved, and it got really annoying really fast. So I just had to try this guy out. It's an amazing card. Then we've got uh, Gideon's Falnax, um, another way to give all your stuff indestructible and then get a bunch of tokens. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but forgive me. <laughs> Okay, on to our enchantments. We've got Intangible Virtue, playing with tokens, duh. Now we've got a Trail of Evidence. Great to make a whole bunch of clue tokens. Just sack them when you need to. I've got Anointed Procession. This is the enchantment that I've been referring to pretty much the entire video. Um, it's great having a Parallel Lives effect in white. Um, usually those kind of effects are in green, you know, with doubling season, Parallel Lives, stuff like that. I'm really happy they didn't make this thing green-white. They could have easily done that, and they didn't. So it makes it go be able to go into, of course, a lot more ty types of decks. Like, I can see this really going in handily, like in red-white or even black-white. Um, awesome card. Probably one of my favorites from the set. Uh, Metallurgic Summonings, another really good card from Kaladesh, of course. Um, as I said, we're going with the spell spell slinger kind of theme here. This can make some pretty mean tokens pretty fast. Plus, the second ability isn't bad. Um, being able to recast all those spells and everything, it, it usually works out really well in your favor. So, okay, and then we've got our one one planeswalker for the deck, El Elspeth Tyrell, of course. Um, the minus five is what you're looking to do. <laughs> I don't know how common that's going to be for you, but I mean, she's just pretty good overall. I mean. I've used it before and she ends up working out pretty well. I believe we're going on to our lands here, so in alphabetical order, of course, we've got Adakar Waste, Arcane Lighthouse, Azorius Chancery, Azorius Guildgate, Command Tower, Dark Depths, <laughs> some secret tech there, <laughs> um, Flooded Strand, Ghost Quarter, Glacial Fortress, Hollowed Fountain, Islands, of course. Core Haven, Mystic Gate, Plains, uh, Temple of Enlightenment, and then Thespian Stage. Now, of course, the Th Thespian Stage is in there to work with the Dark Depths. How cool is it to be able to have a 21-21 unblockable, giant, flying, indestructible monster? That's really what I want to do with it, of course. Um, obviously, a lot of people will see what you're doing pretty quick, but if you do it in the same turn, I know you can't give it haste in this deck necessarily, but it could be pretty cool. Um, but with that, that's the end of the deck tech. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, of course, 
give us you know likes comments uh, tell us what we're doing right tell us what you'd like to see differently and uh, we'll see you next time thanks guys